Welcome to this uh, Windows Computer and Technology channel. And uh, one of the things that uh, some of you have been asking me is about the new RTLSDR.com model V4 of the uh, RTLSDR uh, dongle, basically. So I have the V3. I've talked about it a lot. Um, it is surprising for the price. This is where it, it stands. You will get shortwave and it's it's fairly sensitive i've received amateur satellites on two meters with it i mean it it does a, a job that is not you know pretty pretty good for what it is um where my most of my comments go is of course the front end is um a little problematic uh overloading and and images appear the fact that you have to switch uh in the software if you want to move from vhf uhf to HF, and that isn't actually something that is uh, necessarily that easy for everybody. I see a lot of people not being able to go to shortwave and not understanding that you have to switch uh, the, in the software in order to receive shortwave. Uh, and that, that's not counting the fact that some people might have a, uh, you know, a, a, a bad one, a Chinese one that is counterfeit and which is not the V3 or V4. Uh, this one is supposed to be an improved version. Uh, it is not very expensive. Once again, that's like thirty or forty dollars, um, which is quite inexpensive. Um, I might actually eventually take a look at it, see if you know how how much better it is or not. But it still is based on the same uh, HF up converter and all of that. So you know, switching between bands. And um, it also has one major problem for people that are not very tech savvy is the fact that you have to understand how to install the special drivers because it doesn't work just directly like that. You have to install the special drivers uh, to actually <clears throat> have it working so that the software can detect it and run. Uh, without the special drivers, it will not be detected and will not run. So, you know, it makes it, uh, uh, it, it, its performance is surprising, but it's darn complicated for someone that isn't very, very computer-ish. So that's where my stand is. If you're looking for an entry-level SDR, I always say the SDR Play RSP1A is the least expensive of all SDRs that is plug and play. Just plug it in, install the software, it works. Um, now, if you are, you know, good with computers and all of that, you know, you're going to have fun with an RTL SDR. It, and like I said, I've, I've received pretty much anything I got to receive. So it's pretty cool. Uh, a couple of things that are interesting on this one, they do say it, it runs less hot and which is nice because it does run really hot. The V3 is, is crazy hot, uh, which is never a good thing. Uh, this one apparently is less hot and also apparently has a better um, design for the uh, improved noise reduction in the power supply uh, of, of, you know, getting noise from the computers, stuff like that. So there's improved filtering also, apparently. So, you know, um, I can't say, is it a improvement over the V3? It looks like on paper. Um, I don't know if some people will ever uh, eventually get it. I'll check it out and maybe get one that's not very expensive, like I said. But uh, this is where I stand on the RTL SDRs, mostly how difficult it is to actually have the install done and then the switch between shortwave and, and VHF, UHF. Once you get a hang of that, it works fine. So if, it's not for everybody. I think that if you're not really good with computers, stay away from it because you're never going to understand how to have it working right. If you're good with computers, you you know you you like to try SDRs, then um, it's it's surprising for the price that it is, very surprising performance. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us thumbs up. Thank you for watching.